you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, the Pope on Film. I mean, who is it? It's sweeping the nation. But only the real fans, the true hardcore fans who have been with us since the beginning, only they would know the two basic facts about the two of us. Two undeniably really real and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us, America's hottest will they or won't they couple, the next Sam and Diane, it's Bunny and Maylin. Yeah. First and foremost, Bunny is the little known fact about you, which is that when you're not doing the podcast, you work up close and personal with animals. But it's quite confusing. And so I thought I'd take this time on the podcast to just sort of clarify Bunny why do you toilet train alligators? Um, because they're a very intelligent species that if we can just try to help accommodate their needs more, we can help integrate it into society. But they have to take the first step, and that is indoor pooping. Indoor pooping. Yeah, yeah. You know, then, then from... Indoor pooping, then we can go, you know, possibly Congress, you know, something like that. I, 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 we could totally run an alligator for Congress. Well, the thing about alligators is that, you know, sometimes they eat animals and sometimes they eat people. And the thing that I hate the most about alligators is a lot of times alligators... They're not jam up alligators. You know? Yeah. They're not really jam up guys. A lot of times when I see alligators, they are always doubting El Dan. And then I think, hey, alligator, hey, soon to be luggage. Yeah. Who are you to doubt El Dandy? <laughs> Who are you to doubt El Dandy? New catchphrase yeah. for the Pope on Film podcast. Well, I you was, said doubt El Dandy. I, I, I personally was thinking that, you know, we, we could, once we get the toilet training issue settled, okay, that's a given, okay? But once we get that issue settled, we could run the Alligator for Congress, and I am thinking that the campaign slogan should be it's an alligator. Does it matter? Hell yeah. Well, the way that I see it now is that if Marjorie Taylor well, Greene be right elected from, to public office, it's an alligator. <laughs> yeah. If Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert can be elected to public office, then basically anyone or anything can. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure that the alligator can't be as dumb as Lauren Boebert and Marjorie Taylor Greene. I would like to take this time to say that during this entire podcast, I've been drinking a very small can of Squirt. I am a huge fan of this soda, and I had my kids drink it, and they liked it, and they didn't. They had never heard, ah, uh, Starry is better, Squirt's right behind it. Squirt was very popular in like the 80s. This was like an 80s. I, the way I explained it to the kids was this was a Squirt soda, was Mountain Dew before Mountain Dew really became extreme Mountain Dew. Yeah. I I like Squirt. I'm a big fan of it. And uh, there's a big Squirt following online. If you don't believe me, just go on Google and download uh, and uh, search the term Squirters. That's the term <laughs> for people who are big fans of Squirt. And... Uh, <laughs> And you know what? Click that button that, that says, like, I'm feeling lucky. It'll take you to the first page. Yeah. For Squirters. Because uh, I'm a part of the Squirter fandom. I'm, 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 I'm a big fan of it. I'm a squirting gal. <laughs> and a uh, big fan. Big fan of Squirt. The soda. Yes, Eleanor, in the middle of the podcast, asking me a question. Yes, my six-year-old, soon-to-be seven-year-old daughter. Can you spit out the question? Cause wow, she's kind of quick. Yeah, probably yes, cause she is back from camp. 
Okay, so we will talk to her. Okay, now let me finish. And the second fact, which is about me, is that I'm a lover of history. I love it, but I'm also a storyteller. So this is the part of the podcast, the second part of The Big Shoe, where we get a story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know that well, and I reword it a little bit via my own unique storytelling uh, razzmatazz. And so that's what this is, another educationally uneducational installment of historic approximations, or as we like to call it, Give me some dramatic music, Bunny. And to be clear, that's spelled capital H, capital A, small p. And we are not ashamed of our small p here at the Pope on Film podcast. I say the nay! Also, this particular segment used to go by a different name for years and years and years. It was called Steve's Historic Approximations, or SHAP, as we like to call it repeatedly annoyingly whether anyone wanted us to call it that or not however a dead name is a, is dead for a reason and so we are moving on amber okay please stop texting jeez louise okay and so we are moving on so what is happening in half this week well this week we have a very special little half that we are very proud of it's perfectly situated within our overall summer theme because every summer for six years now we do themed summers we did the summer of star wars where we watched all the star wars theatrically released movies in chronological order not counting the star wars clone wars animated movie because that doesn't fucking count we did the summer of saw we did the summer of fred willard which was a lot of fun and so this summer is the summer of yo where we're not only watching all of the rocky movies but we are counting how many yo's are in each movie and are in the yo's in the whole series uh in in general and so in keeping with the easy breezy summer theme poor easy breezy i'm almost crying and i didn't even read the book i have a short sharp tap and that is set in the overall Rocky Cinematic Universe, or as I like to call it, the Yo CU. <laughs> the Yo CU. I like nice. it. The Yo Cinematic Universe. The Yo CU. I think it's cute. Yes. Uh, so here's the story. Here's the half. Sylvester Stallone is making Rocky Three. He did that last week. You know the one. It's the one with Mr. T in it. The one where Apollo Creed gets an actual character and really very little else. Uh, I want to talk about this in the third part of the podcast, but I'm going to mention it right now. The way that I see Rocky Four is... Rocky Three had a montage, a training montage, that featured the song Eye of the Tiger, which was a massive hit. And so people went up to Sylvester Stallone and said, hey, I loved that training montage. That montage was great. Loved that training montage. But what Sylvester Stallone didn't understand is when fans were saying, I love this montage, what they're really saying is, I love that Eye of the Tiger song. Yeah. But Stallone took it the wrong way and said, oh, you like the montages. Next time, I'll put in a fucking shit ton yeah. of montages. I'll do a montage, then one bit of dialogue. M another montage. What? Uh, Tally, it, it, Adrian's here in Russia? Another montage. Like back-to-back -back montage city. Yeah. The film is 80% montages, Rocky IV. It's fascinating. It is a montage masterclass. It is the TED Talk for monologues. <laughs> and it's amazing. So Sylvester Stallone is making Rocky III. In the third film, Rocky becomes the world champion. And as Mickey puts it, he becomes civilized. He has money now. Yeah. He's gone from doing a stupid commercial where he's playing a palooka to being, you know, it, 
doing an American Express commercial and on the Muppet show and he's getting comfortable and he's getting popular. And so how, how, huh? We need to show how popular and rich and successful Rocky has become. So Stallone okay. wanted a statue. Yeah. So in 1981. Okay. Now I have a problem here, though. Is that. What? Rocky was not just uneducated. He was already punch drunk. Yeah. He was yeah. not a smart man. You know? I was going to. I was going to save this for, for part three of the podcast, but I'm just going to say it now because, like, I absolutely positively have to. Rocky is the worst fucking boxer in the world. He never puts his hands up. Yeah. Ever. He leads with his face. Yeah. And I think the reason why he's such a good boxer is only because other boxers would have insane, massive, permanent brain damage from what's happening to Rocky. But when you don't have a brain, yeah. there's no brain damage to be had. This is true. But he is the worst boxer. Put your, fi put your fists up! <laughs> Protect your head! You're just standing there! You're leading with your forehead! That's not good! Fuck! Dude, <laughs> but yeah, he's already he's already like in the head, but now he's in the head with money. <laughs> so Stallone wants a statue. See, that's his idea. Oh, it, what a beautiful scene! He'll be getting a statue of himself, and and everyone will be there, and he'll try to announce his retirement. But then, oh, the ex-con. Clubber Lang will show up. So in 1981, Stallone himself commissioned three actual statues to be created. Not one, but three. Uno dos, uh, 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 one more, uno mas. And so he hired oh, a sculpture. Okay. So, so you're saying that the statues were actually built, but they were built more actual as movie props, kind of. No, no. Like, he hired an actual sculptor. Yeah. To make actual statues. Yes, I got These that. are not movie props. He actually got well, a sculptor. Well, then it's used as a, as a movie prop. Yeah, no, no, I got that. There it's used as a movie sculptures. prop. But it's an actual statue. Yeah. Yeah. And he got a sculptor named A. Thomas Schomburg. To create the statues. He had done a number of other statues. His other statues are at Yankee Stadium. Right at the front of Yankee Stadium. At the National Gallery of Beijing in China. Okay. And also the U.S. Olympic Training Center. In Colorado Springs, Colorado. Really? Yeah, that's your neck of the woods. Fun for you. Yeah. I've never been there. I, I, I don't know if there's a reason to go. I think it's just there a is now center. because it's been in a half. Yeah. He has a statue. He's got a freaking statue there. So, uh, the guy still lives in Colorado too. He's a really nice guy. Uh, so, for the movie, one of the statues is placed right above the steps of the legendary Philadelphia Museum of Arts, where he tried to run up in uh, Rocky One, and then he couldn't. And then, as the shirt shows, at the end, he's doing the, hey, I actually did run up the steps. Hooray, yay for me. Yeah. Now, me, me being a noob who knows nothing about Philly, I assume... As a tourist who knows nothing about Philadelphia other than what I have seen in It's Always Sunny. I assumed that if I took a trip to Philadelphia, I don't know why I would. And I went to the Philadelphia Museum of Art that I could run up the stairs, 
do that Rocky jump thing. Yeah. When I am done on stage from my performance next Sunday at the Oklahoma City Pride Fest in downtown Oklahoma City, doing my main stage performance, I'm going to do the Rocky jumping up thing. Yay! I ran up fucking steps. Yay. Uh, and, and so I assumed I could go to the Philadelphia Museum of Art, run up the steps, and then boom, right there on top of the steps, there's the Rocky statue. But no! Okay. It's not there. It is, but it's not. This is the story. So they finish the movie, Rocky Three, and people go, okay, you're done. What about the statue? And Stallone goes, yo. I'm assuming he starts every sentence with that. Yo, I got an idea. Yo, I, Sylvester Stallone, the world's biggest celebrity at the moment. I have graciously decided to donate this statue, one of only three in existence, with with, with an amazing, uh, uh, what's the thing on the bottom? A uh, the, uh, uh, pedestal, a big massive pedestal, and it's made of, of, of brass and and, and it's a legitimate statue by a professional sculptor. I have decided to donate this statue to the Philadelphia Museum of Art. Yes, 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 yes. You're welcome. Uh, but the museum goes, Ew, fuck no. We don't want your fucking statue. We have fucking, we are a museum. We have fucking Picassos in here. <laughs> we got fucking uh, Monet, Renoir, that dude, Chris, Chris Renoir, the guy who, who, who painted pictures and then killed his family. Yeah. Renoir. That's a wrestling joke. Yes, we've, we've, got, we've got everything. We've even got that guy who cut off his ear. We got, we got all of the art. In our actual art museum, you want us to have in front of our legitimate art museum a big ass statue from a movie starring Mr. D. <laughs> Get your raggedy ass movie bra the fuck off of our majestic steps. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, thank you, Eleanor, for stopping the podcast so I can give you this. I wasn't on a roll or anything, so it's absolutely fine. I didn't just say something really funny, and you're totally not ruining the flow. There you go. Just take that. Just take that whole thing. Just, to, just take it. There you go. Okay. So a big fight broke out in Philadelphia over this statue because uh, the museum didn't want a movie prop outside of their prestigious museum of high class, but the city's art commission had to step in and say, hey, I'm getting all of these angry calls from uh, Philadelphianites, Philadelphionians, yeah. saying that they want the statue to be there at the steps. So why don't you want the statue? And then the museum goes, because we're a museum of art, and this is a movie prop. And then the City Art Commission says, but it's art. But then the, the museum goes, okay, but well, what is art? This isn't it. This is a movie prop. And a big argument started, a big citywide debate over what is art. And I think that's fucking hilarious when you remember that so many Philadelphians are angry, belligerent drunks. Okay. And I and I just think it's really funny when you think about the fight literally happening in the streets. Hey, they should keep the fucking statue, all right? It's fucking art. Oh yeah, you think this is fucking art? It's not fucking art. It's a fucking movie prop. Hey, well, what do you think of art? What did Plato say? What is the definition of art according to Plato? Plato, my ass. I'm about Schopenhauer. I'm about Kant. I'm about Hegel, motherfucker. 
And, you know, getting into these big psychological fights over the definition of art. I think it's fun. <laughs> you stop bad-mouthing. My favorite German philosophers are all smack the smile out of your face, you piece of shit. <laughs> so, the statue... Nice. So the statue was moved. After the movie, there was a big fight, but final, the museum finally just put their foot down and said, hey, even the city art commissioner can't make us do shit. We're the museum. We say no. Get your fucking statue out of the way. And then suddenly, the Spectrum Arena in Philadelphia said, um, hello, uh, I, the Spectrum, uh, here, uh, I would like to chime in with just an idea. You know, we're the location of all of the Rocky fights, all of the main ones, in the uh, YoCU. Yeah. So it would sort of make sense if uh, Mr. Stallone wanted to donate it somewhere instead of donating it to Steps. Why don't we put it in front of the spectrum? I think it would be a great idea for tourism and fucking Rocky's like Stallone is like okay, I mean if you want the statue you can have the statue but I want it in, in front of the steps! The steps! Those are the steps! And I want it, okay, but okay, if the museum doesn't want them Fucking fine here, Spectrum. And so they were placed in front of the Spectrum Arena in Philly, where most of the fights take place in the movies. And there the statue stayed until the 90s because of Rocky V, our next movie, which I fucking hate. Okay. Because I think that the Rocky Cinematic Universe, the Yo CU, could have ended at Rocky IV. It's his pinnacle. It's his best part as a as a boxer. He's done the impossible, and it's wonderful. But Stallone, being an artiste, he's like, well, we can't have the rise without the fall. So the movie begins with like Stallone naked in a shower, and his brain hurts, and he goes to a doctor. And he's got permanent brain damage and he can't fight anymore or he might die. And then all oh, the people who have been uh, handling his money, they mismanage the money. And now Rocky's broke and he has no money and he can never fight again. And he's forced to move back into the freaking ghetto. And it's depressing as fuck. <laughs> the main fight happens in an alleyway outside of a fucking bar. Yeah. It's just sad. And it was so sad that I never saw Rocky Balboa, Creed, Creed 2, or Creed 3, because Rocky 5 pissed me off that much. Yeah. So I'm excited to watch those movies. I just got to get through Rocky 5 again, which sucks. But <laughs> in that movie, Rocky loses his money. He goes back to living in a bad part of Philadelphia. And so. They put the statue back on top of the steps because, oh, we're going to have a scene here at the Philadelphia Museum of Art. we got to put the statue back. And the, the, the museum goes, okay, fine. Put the statue here. So they make the movie. And after the movie is done, Rocky Five Stallone goes, uh, yo. Yo, 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 yo. Uh, it's me, Sylvester Stallone. And, uh, we're done with the movie. And, you know, I was thinking, yo, maybe, yo, 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 if you want me to keep the statue here, I, I'd be glad to leave it here, not give it back to the Spectrum. And the museum goes, well, you know, a lot of time has passed since the last time the statue was here, and yeah, 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 we still don't want it. Take your fucking statue away. We don't want it here. And Stallone's like, fuck, okay. You're Spectrum, you can have it. Spectrum's like, yay, all right. And so the statue stayed there. Until 2006. When Philadelphianians demanded 
that the statue be put on the steps. And now the statue in in this the year of our Lord 2023, the statue is not above the steps. Okay. Now in front of the steps, the statue is also not there. Okay. Now in the sidewalk in front of the Philadelphia Museum of Art. It's also not there. Okay. <laughs> because the museum is still being a douche canoe about the whole goddamn thing. But a compromise was struck, and now the Rocky statue resides on a grassy knoll adjacent to the now world-famous steps. Uh. Well, one of the statues... Well, one of the statues is there, as you remembered. They made a three. So one is now uh, uh, at the grassy knoll looking for the second shooter. The second statue is in Sylvester Stallone's huge-ass honking mansion along with possibly those turtles. Yeah. And the third one is somewhere in Colorado, owned by the sculptor A. Thomas Schoenberg, who now sells 12-inch and 20-inch replicas of that statue at RockyStatue.com, not a sponsor. And that is the story of the Rocky statue. I find it fascinating. I legit thought if I go to Philadelphia, what do you do in Philadelphia? I'm going to touch the fucking bell. I'm going to uh, try and find out where they filmed I, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And then I'm going to go run up the Rocky Steps and take a picture in front of the statue. But the statue's not up there. Yeah. It's on some field nearby. But apparently, it is a fairly regular occurrence for Sylvester Stallone to just show up at that statue. Yeah. There, yeah, there are pictures and reports of like, oh, here's an inner city group of kids going to the Museum of... It, of, of art in Philadelphia. Oh, hey, there's the steps. Let's run by the steps. Oh, you know, the statue's over here. Let's go see the statue. Holy shit, kids, it's Sylvester Stallone. And he's taking pictures with the kids in front of the statue and signing autographs and stuff. So he seems like a nice guy. Yeah. I am shocked that the museum didn't want it. To be honest, I would imagine... That's still to this day, so many years removed from the release of the first Rocky film, there's still motherfuckers running up those steps. Eleanor, you don't, you're, you're wearing just a shirt because you're still in pajama mode. This is the second time in like two months that this has happened. We do not want to get demonetized. Put on pants, please. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Being a parent is great. But I love this shack. I didn't know this about the statue. I assumed it was just there. Yes. You know? And I think most people do. I, I'm surprised that somewhere in Colorado, possibly somewhere in the city where you live, Bunny, yeah. is the third freaking statue. Damn it, boy. That is shocking to me. I know I say this at the end of most of our uh, historic approximations. I'm shocked more people don't know this story. It's like one of those places that are here that you don't really actually hear much about. Right? Like, how often do you hear about the Olympic Center? You know? Yeah, uh, but, but... The Rocky statue isn't at the Olympic Center, but another statue by the guy who made the Rocky oh. statue is in front of the Olympic Center. No, the original Rocky statue is in the possession of the sculptor who is making copies of it at RockyStatue.com, not a sponsor. They're expensive. They're expensive. The 20 inch replica is like $2,500. So the original that artist is, is cranking the, out the replicas. Artist is, yeah. Yeah. Uh, apparently, 
his daughter now runs the website, rockystatue.com. He is still alive, but he's given his daughter, like, control of the rights of the statue. Yeah. It's, it's a fascinating story. And, yeah, somewhere in Colorado, possibly in your town, is a sculptor A. Thomas Schoenberg's house where he has the last remaining copy of the Rocky statue and is cranking out copies for people who will apparently pay that much. Rocky has a huge following, even now. It's surprising. Wow. This, is a surpri this is a popular movie franchise still. Good for him, I mean... Yeah, A. Thomas Schomburg. He, he, Good for he a. deserves his success. It's a good-looking yeah. statue. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah. Good for him. So if he has the yeah. rights to, to the actual statue... <clears throat> he has the rights to release images and copies of the statue... But he doesn't own the actual rights to the statue. So if you buy a statue, that's great. But you can't display the statue for any commercials or promotional material because that statue is technically the rights of uh, MGM. Yeah. And a Thomas Schomper. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, it's a weird gray area. But I find the story of the statue fascinating. Apparently, the Philadelphia Museum of Art have a stick up their ass. Yeah. But I got to imagine a lot of people are still going to the Philadelphia Museum of Art solely to run up the damn steps and to take a picture in front of the Rocky statue. Yes, yeah, see, yeah, see, and I think that's that, what I was trying to say in the beginning. Is that it was, I was really kind of on the it's <clears throat> a movie prop side. You know, yeah. I mean. Yes, it's a statue. Yes, it's a piece of art. Yes, it would look good on top of steps. But it's a movie prop. Yeah. You know? Yeah, like, uh, I imagine the steps in front of the Philadelphia Museum of Art are going to be, from for the rest of humanity, those steps are going to be seen in the same way that people now see the fucking steps from the Joker movie. Yeah. That whether the Philadelphia Museum of Art likes it or not, no matter what they get, hey, we just got a surprise second copy of the Mona Lisa where she's fucking naked and flipping off the artist. Yeah. That it won't matter that there will still be a shit ton of people who will always go to the Philadelphia Museum of Art solely to run up steps and then to jump. Period. Just like those steps in the Joker, people will always go to that one freaking neighborhood in, I think, Brooklyn yeah. and dance on those steps to uh, Gary Glitter. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Hey! Do, do, do. Do, 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 do. Hey! I'm wearing Crocs. So that's it for historic approximations or HAP this week. And it was a lot of fun. I like doing a, a Rocky HAP. I'm going to see if I can find another Rocky HAP to do for our next episode in two weeks. Because yeah. I'll be busy next week. I have a main stage performance at the Oklahoma City Pride yes, Fest you event. Do. Uh, I, yeah, I'm not really talking about it that much, so a lot of people don't know, but... I know, I know, I know, I know, that sucks. And that's weird because we can get to Texas in like three hours. But somehow it takes like almost ten hours to get to you. That, that's, I, that sucks. Yeah. I can get to the Ikea in Texas in three hours. But to get to you is somehow like this massive difficulty. It sucks. Yeah. But yeah, that's next week. I'm going to talk about it a little bit in Rocky IV. <laughs> uh, about it. Rocky Iv is the name of the 
of the movie, Rocky is. Rocky is. Yeah. Rocky is. Yeah. Uh, Rocky is how my generation learned what the fuck Roman numerals were. This is true. Period. This is true. Sylvester Stallone taught Gen X how to do Roman numerals. Period. End of sentence. Now... Uh, they're just doing Creed number three, and kids don't know their Roman numerals, numerals anymore. But that's it for uh, half this week. Be sure and join us next week for more educationally uneducational fun with... <laughs> and cut on that.